Good afternoon. A warm welcome to everyone as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Advent. Just a reminder that the creed can be found on the inside front cover of your bulletin, and the song sheet can also be found inside your bulletin. So as we begin our celebration, let's rise and join together singing Maranatha, Lord Messiah. Thanks a lot for being here this afternoon as we continue our Advent journey. Welcome to our new speaker system and camera system. This is our trial run, so we'll see how it goes. So thanks for being here. We gather in prayer in the name of the Father, and to the Son, the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. In our gospel today, we have the angel Gabriel appear to Mary and ask her to be the mother of the Lord. And she says, may it be done to me according to your word. Annunciation moment. And so we turn to the Lord now, trust in his mercy. With King David, we know God has made a covenant with us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. With St. Paul, we stand firm in God and live the gospel. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. With Mary, the mother of all disciples, we ask for act of faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, by, may by, by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And lest we see you be nourished by the word of God. David proposes to build a house for God. A reading from the book of the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to the Nathan prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture, from the care of your flock, to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. 
Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me, and your, your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. chosen one I have made a covenant I have sworn to David my servant I will establish your dynasty Paul is thankful for the privilege of preaching the gospel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel, and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Christ Jesus, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
Mary responds to the amazing announcement from the angel Gabriel. The Lord be with you. This evening we have a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, thanks for being here and thanks for joining us online. Really appreciate it. And again, thank you to all the donors who made this speaker system and camera system possible for the parish. I really appreciate it on behalf of all of us. Think of a little story. A dad in, is in his favorite recliner reading the sports page, all about the Packers and the big game. And he's reading, and his four-year-old daughter comes up by him, and, and she says, Daddy, can you hardly wait? Dad didn't move. He's reading about the Packers. There's other important things going on here. So she tries again. Daddy, can you hardly? No response. One more time, a little louder. Daddy? Can you hardly? He looks at her, honey, what do you mean, can you hardly? She said, Daddy, can you hardly wait for Christmas? And you could tell by the sparkle in her eyes of a four-year-old. And he hugged her and said, honey, I can hardly wait for Christmas. Can you hardly? In our gospel, we have the familiar story of the angel Gabriel coming to Mary. We call that the Annunciation, one of the joyful mysteries of the Rosary. In that, Mary finds a purpose, a direction for her life as a little girl. She's young. Joseph would also have an Annunciation. He was going to divorce Mary as she was found pregnant, not by him. And he was betrothed to her. But an angel comes in a dream and says, take Mary as your wife. And he would take her in and love her and take care of that baby. Two annunciations. And I would like to suggest the little girl asking daddy, can you hardly wait for Christmas, was annunciation for him. And you as parents have had that experience. Or a little boy, a little girl, your son, daughter comes up, and they could hardly wait for Christmas. It reminded him of his important role as father of that little girl. This weekend, as we hear those readings, we remind that God has a plan for salvation. And one that is required that we gotta wait. It's not Christmas yet. We gotta wait. Waiting is not easy, no matter what it may be. But the plan is set forth 
by the Lord. And we need to be aware of this plan. The angel was sent to Galilee, not just to any city, but to Nazareth. He wasn't sent to just any girl. He was sent to this little girl named Mary. And he wasn't just sent to any Joel. He was sent to Joseph of the line of King David, the prophecy that there where the Messiah would come from. I think all of us would love to have the Lord kind of wave his magic wand at times, huh? That pandemic should have ended in April, right? Just wave your magic wand and be all done. Our readings remind us that's not how the Lord chooses to go. Instead, he uses people, Mary, Joseph, and all of us, to make his purpose come about. Think of the Annunciation moment of those scientists and researchers who discovered COVID-19 vaccine. Do you think they did somersaults? All the hard work they did for all of us to give us some hope. So as we get closer to Christmas, may our prayer be also that God will use us for holy purposes, for holy moments. I invite us to be specific in our prayer. It seems like that's how the Lord works. But be patient and wait. And so we thank Mary and Joseph who were ready for that Annunciation moment and the many Annunciation moments they had after that first one, from the visit from the Gabriel and visit in the dream. And then I ask all of you then, can you hardly enjoy the last few days before Christmas? Amen. I invite you to have the bulletin with you here or at home to grab that little prayer that is about waiting. So let us pray. God of wisdom and strength, we await you. Like David, we await your prophetic guidance and the peace you promise. Like Mary, we await the liberation of all people and the fullness of your kingdom. Do not keep us waiting. Deliver us from hatred, ignorance, and apathy. Bring us your justice and your healing. Give us your wisdom, compassion, and courage. Show us your light. We await you, for you alone can save us. Come quickly, Lord. Do not delay. We await you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So as we continue our walk to Bethlehem, let's stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered here around this Advent table, we take time to offer these prayers. For the church, 
that we recognize that we are favored by God and courageously cooperate with the Spirit in God's saving plan. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that the advent of the Prince of Peace may enlighten the minds and hearts of all government leaders to resolve disputes with justice and compassion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are grieving, who have been abused, who struggle with addictions, or who have lost jobs, that the courage of Mary may bring hope and promise for tomorrow, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, learning to celebrate differently in this sacred season, that even in the midst of difficulties the pandemic presents, our celebrations with family and friends will be filled with joy and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those on our prayer tree, for those who have asked for our prayers, for the intentions in our hearts, and for our loved ones and parishioners who have died, including Ralph Haberland and Mike Dockery, and especially for Brianna Foley and Vic Piantek, that they now know the fullness of God's mercy and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For these prayers spoken, the prayers in our hearts, we take those last steps to Bethlehem. Let us ask the Blessed Mother to guide us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I bet you be seated at this time and join our preparation of gift song. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted, God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer, exultant in his praise. And so with the angels and archangels, 
with all the wholesome powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by saying down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, enter willingly into his passion for everyone. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body to be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was in, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life from the chalice of salvation, giving you thanks have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake in the body and blood of Christ may gather into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring the fullness of charity together Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and your entire people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. The Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And we'll sing the Amen. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So let us pray that prayer that Mary's son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. And let us sing the Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ.
and thanks a lot for being here. Again, the Christmas schedule's in the bulletin, but just again to refresh memory, we'll have a, a, a mass on Christmas Eve by noon online for everybody's safety. And so uh, we also added a mass on Christmas Eve. So we have a 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 6.30. On Christmas Day, we have a 10 o'clock, and then also communion service, 11.15 to 11.30. Again, we have to practice safety for everybody, protocol, so face masks, hand sanitize, and we'll have chairs in the gathering space, but uh, spread out, so we won't have the huge capacity in, as in past years. The TV out there now does not work, but hopefully by Christmas Day, we'll have a new one in there that'll work for people who are in the gathering space. Christmas collection will again be given away to our St. Matthew and, uh, Outreach Endowment Fund to help, uh, again, keep that Christmas spirit going by helping people through that endowment fund. First, I just want to announce one in the bulletin, but I want to publicly thank Margaret Batchelor. Uh, she worked eight and a half years here at the parish, has chosen to go a different route, and, but I want to thank her for her eight and a half years of service to the parish. It's wonderful having her part of the staff and all the things she did for us, so if you see her, please thank her. We also welcome then uh, Ann Dobick will be taking Margaret's place, and so welcome her when you see her. And uh, with the shifting in uh, personnel a little bit, our office hours are going to be, we're just going to be open Monday through Thursday, and so Friday from now on will be closed. Uh, so that's the different changes. So make you aware of it, but I want to thank Margaret and also welcome Ann to the staff. So let's stand now, offer closing prayer. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may God bless us in these final steps. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass and is going to share the joy of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love the guest is on the way. Stars keep the watch when night is dim. One more light the bowl shall bring. Shining beyond the frosty weather, bright as sun and moon together. People look east and sing today, love the star is on the way. Angels announce with shouts the